they're constantly very much aware as a couple about what's going on in the community as well as the world and they have a real compassion and a compelling wanting to um, make things better. But if people don't know them and they just read about their service to the community um, in the paper, um, they may not know that. They may not know that they live every day of their life with passion and with integrity. And I think there are very few of us who can say that, and that I admire most about them. Uh, we know them as personal friends, my wife and I. We've known them for 40 plus years. Uh, we know them as good, both good, decent people. Uh, what, what impresses us both, I think, about Art and Louise is the, is the ethics they have, the values that they have, uh, and the way they, they handle and treat people. Kids for cash. That's what authorities say was the bottom line of a diabolical plan. Even more shocking were the identities of the two men behind it. They were men in black, men with the power to take away your freedom and your future. Jim Avila reports that they're accused of using that power to get rich, rich on the backs of children. A mystery in Wilkes-Barre, the heart of Pennsylvania's struggling coal country. Why were so many kids in Luzerne County's juvenile court sent directly to jail and in such a rush? They all had one thing in common, the same judge, Mark Chivarella. But Judge Grimm became involved because the Supreme Court uh, trying to figure out what, what they were going to do about this. And uh, as is, is well known here in, in Berks County, I'm sure Judge Grimm was appointed the special master for that situation. And he reviewed the cases of, of every child who appeared before then Judge uh, Mark Chivarella. And so he, he really uh, took that situation on, provided a way for the Supreme Court to resolve it effectively and in a way that frankly I think has, has resulted in strengthening our juvenile justice system. In the times that he and I spoke during that, during that period, there was such a raw emotion that came out of him because of what he was feeling uh, for those children who were, you know, uh, detained illegally. We've seen corruption cases around the country in every state. What's different about this case that concerns you? It's kids. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It really... <laughs> <laughs> it, it really upsets me because it's on the back of kids. I can remember not even, um, not only witnessing firsthand, but constantly hearing from our principals about what an impression Art made. Uh, how fair he was, but how compassionate he was uh, with the young people and, and with their parents. And always, always made a decision that was a growth decision for the young person as well as holding them accountable. I admire them as people. I mean, they're people that I am totally comfortable with and have always enjoyed their company. I admire, though, their commitment. Whatever they believe in, they act on. They're not just people who say things, they're people who do things. A new government estimate says if a bird flu pandemic hit the United States, as many as 1.9 million people could die. The most recent thing that I was on a committee with her a few years back when the pandemic was a big issue and a lot of people turned a blind eye to it figuring somebody else would do it and she really championed the cause and brought the entire community together. Louise was instrumental in getting this council together. She co-chaired it and tirelessly worked for a number of years to prepare lectures and material to uh, hand out to people so that they could prepare themselves, their families, and their neighbors. Judge Grimm uh, is an exceptional human being. I mean, he is truly one of the most extraordinary human beings that, that I, I've ever had the privilege of meeting. And I think Louise is much the same. And uh, that together, they are just an extraordinary couple. My late husband, Fred Gage, and I uh, were at the, had the privilege of attending Art's 60th birthday uh, celebration. And Art and Louise spoke 
about each other in that gathering. And I was so touched by the love and respect and admiration that they expressed for each other. They are, they are definitely a team. I think Art and Louise are just the greatest love story. They met when Art was on leave in the service in Montreal and he and a buddy were standing in line uh, at a very, very popular discotheque, so he had to stand in line to get in. And he saw Louise and he said to his friend, that's the girl I'm going to marry. Their ability to demonstrate not only the love for each other, but, but for other people is, is something that we all should take note of and strive to take it to a level that they've, they've attained. It's, uh, it's kids who grow up uh, who uh, he, he didn't know whether he had an impact on their life or not, but indeed he did. And I think that was one of, the, one of the, the greatest attributes of Judge Art Grimm is that he treats every decision that he makes about a child and a family with such importance because he knows it could in fact change the course of that person's life. And I, that's what makes him uh, one of the best judges in this country. I think uh, most people probably know that uh, Louise was a key figure in the uh, establishment of the Burke's Women in Crisis, which has become an incredible organization that's a role model for many other communities. Well, I was always very, very impressed how Louise was able to start up the physical therapy program at uh, Alvernia College. I mean, that was a tremendous undertaking on her part. Um, and she stewarded that through to being a very highly regarded program. So, and then there, everything that she does, she does with such commitment. But uh, just his commitment and passion, his dedication, uh, his integrity, everything about uh, the way he carries himself, the way he treats other people, and certainly uh, his intellect, uh, unmatched. He, he is just the epitome of what uh, a judge should be. I think sometimes with Art and Louise they come together, they blow it up, but then they come back with this magnificent, to use a very overused term, synergy, because the impact that they make as a couple is um, just as strong as the in impact as they have made individually. Oh, well, they, you know, they're, they're great parents. Um, the anticipation of Catherine's arrival, because they adopted Catherine from Korea, um, you know, that was a tremendously exciting time when we first got to meet Catherine. Um, so they've raised two very responsible, fine human beings, and that's all any parent can do. It's uh, a great benefit to any community that uh, has someone like Louise among their midst. And if anyone has a cause or a, a need in which they can involve Louise, their chances of success are immeasurably improved by getting her on board. And actually, um, down in Stone Harbor, uh, there's a very, very famous, well-known ice cream parlor where Art worked when he was a young man. And uh, his photograph was up there for many years. I mean, only until very recently was this photograph not up there when he was an ice cream scooper and as Skippy. <laughs> um, even now, as this revered um, judge of juvenile justice, there is this large group of people who still know you and love you as Skippy. And what I really like is when we're out socially together, they challenge the people they're with to think in critical ways. But they certainly set a very high example. And consequently, if, uh, if in the back of my mind I'm saying, should I bother to do this or not, or if I'm asked to be on a committee or something of that nature, uh, sometimes it will creep into the back of my mind, well, Art or Louise would have done that, so maybe we should do it too. <laughs> when I think about Art and Louise, I'm reminded uh, of a quote that's attributed to Horace Mann, and he apparently said, be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. So when it's their time, and I hope it's not any time, soon, I think that neither Art nor Louise need to be ashamed.